you verify that's false? There's no evidence that President Trump voted twice in the upcoming general election. All right, if you see a claim you think needs to be verified, you can't sleep. In social media. Four years ago, President It's all due to compromise, and it is steeped in controversy. Every four years, Americans gather to select a president. But the final say is up to the 538 people who make up the Electoral College. 11 Alive viewer Michelle Kulikowski wonders why. Somebody wins the popular vote, they don't necessarily win the Electoral College. Why in 2020 do we still use the Electoral College? The framers of the Constitution wanted a strong executive to run the country, but not too strong. What that meant was that states were going to have to give up power that they, uh, some were not inclined to give up. The compromise between presidential power and state power is the Electoral College. And they wanted the states, all the states, to play a role. Each state gets a minimum of three electors to represent them in the Electoral College. The exact number depends on how many representatives the state has in Congress. In general, the presidential candidate who wins a state gets all of the electors there. Whoever wins a majority of electors wins the Electoral College and the presidency. Kennesaw ah. State political science professor Kerwin Schwinn says without it, a handful of states would dominate the process. California and New York would basically select every president based on population uh, along with Florida and Texas. Emory University political science professor Andrew Gillespie points out that abandoning the Electoral College would be tough. It would require a new constitutional amendment and that ratification process would probably be really difficult. Five times in U.S. history, the candidate with the most votes nationwide has lost to the candidate who had enough votes in the right places to win the Electoral College and the presidency. If you have a question for Jerry Carnes, our task force last year to crack down on the estimated 70,000 gang members in Georgia. We know about the strong winds and the risk of flooding are major concerns for many, and Tracy Kennedy fear share some expert advice to help protect your family and your own. Here in Atlanta, we are already feeling the effects of Zeta, but there are five things you can do to keep your home. It's all due to compromise, and it is steeped in controversy. Every four years, Americans gather to select a president, but the final say is up to the 538 people who make up the Electoral College. 11 Alive viewer Michelle Kulikowski wonders why. Somebody wins the popular vote, they don't necessarily win the Electoral College. Why in 2020 do we still use the Electoral College? The framers of the Constitution wanted a strong executive to run the country, but not too strong. What that meant was that states were going to have to give up power, that they, uh, some were not inclined to give up. The compromise between presidential power and state power is the Electoral College. And they wanted the states, all the states, to play a role. Each state gets a minimum of three electors to represent them in the Electoral College. The exact number depends on how many representatives the state has in Congress. In general, the presidential candidate who wins a state gets all of the electors there. Whoever wins a majority of electors wins the Electoral College and the presidency. Kennesaw ah. State political science professor Kerwin Schwinn says without it, a handful of states would dominate the process. California and New York would basically select every president based on population uh, along with Florida and Texas. Emory University political science professor Andrew Gillespie points out that abandoning the Electoral College would be tough. It would require a new constitutional amendment and that ratification process would probably be really difficult. Five times in U.S. history, the candidate with the most votes nationwide has lost to the candidate who had enough votes in the right places to win the Electoral College and the presidency. If you have a question for Jerry Carnes, our wife, Marietta, at 5.30 tomorrow morning, 62-mile-an-hour wind gust in Carrollton. So this in the morning, between 4 and 8 in the morning, is the time frame for the strongest winds that are going to be moving through with those really high wind gusts. Then that axis of strongest wind gusts moves to the north and east of us at 8 o'clock, 41 mile an hour gusts in Duluth, 48 mile an hour gusts in Gainesville. We're down to well, I am currently without electricity, so my prediction about that was correct. I can't even make a phone call. No cell towers either. Three o'clock in the afternoon, and I finally got out. I've been trying to get out of my building since 11. My sign been bent over, crap blown all over the place. 
Damn. Damn. I don't know what the hell they did to these goddamn elevators, but they screwed something up. Ah, tree damage from the storm. Some more tree damage in the neighborhood. I wonder if it got anybody's car. Ew. No, oh, I just didn't miss the front porch. Just didn't miss the house. Lucky it fell that way. And not on the house. I saw part of a Joe Biden rally. Some driving of wherever he was. And he said he didn't want to shut the economy down. But I believe it was, what, a month, month and a half ago? That's exactly what he said he was going to do. Shut the country back down. I mean, backpedal much? It's turned on. This is an emergency. I repeat, this is an emergency. By direction of the President of the United States, in full agreement with the Governor of the State of California and the Mayor of Los Angeles, the City of Los Angeles is, in the interests of public safety, hereby proclaimed to be under martial law. And lay out their visions for handling the pandemic, reviving the economy, and the future of America. We'll discuss how the President plans to pull out another come-from-behind victory with Senior Advisor Corey Lewandowski. And we'll ask Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar, a member of Biden's inner circle, about his path to 270 electoral votes. Then, with less than 48 hours to go, we'll bring in our Sunday panel for a look at what new Fox polls tell us about the state of the race. And our now that some of the rural areas are also seeing a surge. So let's talk about that. That's right. Uh, as I've said before on the broadcast, it's an election between Metro Atlanta and all of the counties, 129 of them outside Metro Atlanta. And the uh, off the charts are some of these Republican counties. You mentioned Rome a minute ago where the president will be rallying. Uh, that's a big Republican bastion. Uh, we'll keep an eye out on turnout there, which is already off the charts. Uh, Forsyth County, Cherokee County, even uh, Columbia County, a Republican stronghold by Augusta. And I think the magic number and I think uh, the other panelists will agree with me, uh, with, so with regard to the African-American vote, uh, as of Friday morning on uh, GeorgiaVotes.com, which tracks the numbers every day, the uh, black turnout was 27.5%. Now, in the Obama days, it got up to 30% in Georgia. And so both Republicans and Democrats are looking at that. Now, yes, uh, we have until Tuesday, and those numbers can change, but just remember that 30%, uh, because those are reliably Democrats votes for the most part, and that'll be critical to the election. Darren, you're on the Biden campaign team, so I want you to tell us what it was like at his events this week, but also, to Phil's point, are you satisfied with African-American turnout, which has been hovering around 28 percent? Does that number have to be higher for Joe Biden to win in Georgia and for the Democrats to do well? Well, I just love it when Phil can't start talking about black support uh, in Georgia. That lets, lets you know that we've come a long way. But I think the one thing that I'm really focusing on, Lori, is just not black turnout, but just Democratic turnout all across the state. I truly believe that we will never see African Americans turn out at the rate that we saw during uh, 2008 when President Barack Obama was running and also in 2012. What I'm encouraged about is that not only are we doing well in the metro area, some of these rural counties that Phil are referencing, there are other rural counties around Georgia where we see Democrats doing extremely well. You know, I have to steal this this uh, sort of phrase uh, from my good friend Michael Thurman, who made a comment this week, and he said that the Corona Coalition, and this is a coalition of rural and metro voters, are going to ultimately decide who the next president is going to be, and ultimately going to decide who wins.
lived in Georgia, and I believe that this is a, uh, again, biracial, it's, it's definitely demographically uh, diverse. And then lastly, you know, as far as uh, Vice President Biden being here this week, that just shows you with seven days left to go in the election, he chose to be in Battleground, Georgia. And to let our viewers know that Kamala Harris, Senator Kamala Harris, will be back in Georgia uh, today, uh, this Sunday as we take on Friday, and she'll be in Gwinnett County. And so you're getting the future president of the United States and the future vice president of the United States in Georgia in the last week. So that shows you that we believe we can win here. And with Trump coming back, that shows you that he believes that he could possibly lose in this state. Yeah, Kathy, you weigh in here. President Trump is in Georgia yet again. Does that surprise you? And, you know, Democrats are a diverse group. We talked about the African-American turnout, but, you know, we are seeing, you know, Democratic turnout in other parts of the state as well. Yeah, right. I mean, I think what we've been seeing all along, and I love the phrase Corona Coalition. I hadn't heard that before, and I think that's really apt, is that, you know, um, Vice President Biden is uh, pulling white voters, suburban women in particular, at, at much higher rates. You can't isolate into any one demographic to see how we're going to do, although I like all traditional Democratic demographics to be voting at record levels. Uh, so we're going to be working really hard on that between now and Tuesday. Um, clearly, the president is concerned because Georgia, you know, while it should be very high on Biden's list to win, the president has to win Florida in order to make it to the finish line, and things aren't looking that great for him there. So, um, you know, they're really scraping to try to win anywhere they can and, and shore this up, and um, I'm, I'm feeling really um, that are here that needs to hear a message that's positive. Um, you know, I feel like the Biden-Harris ticket is just like they are the king and queen of contradictions. They say that, you know, we're all about unity, but yet they refer to Republicans as chumps. They, they make fun of, of our race as black conservatives. They call us super spreaders when there's no data of that. So, I mean, I just think that all in all, they're just contradictions. And I think that's why you're also seeing lower turnout when it comes to the black vote, because some people are just sitting in apathy. They don't know what to do. They're being told that if you vote for the Republicans and you're voting for racists, which is no, it's not true. And then if they're told that they vote for Biden Harris and they're voting for someone who was a segregationist, but no longer is. So, I mean, it's just a lot of confusion that's going on. I think we're going to see totally see the results of that at the at the polls on election day let's talk about the polls um they Democrats have made a very, very good case to rural voters of why this election is important you know it, it is important have had enough as the former city council president weigh in please Hey, you know, the people are speaking on this one. It is very, very scary uh, to be caught up in an area where there's a lot of street racing going on. And unfortunately, because of the cars being off the road, we're seeing a lot of it. And we're seeing a lot of it across the country. Um, so I think that, uh, you know, I, last week I said the mayor needs to get home and get on top of this because uh, you can really hear people's um, concern and focus on this. So I, I, I think they're right to, to get about it. And I think, you know, they need to put a little work into this and um, figure it out. So what do you think about the fact, I mean, the mayor held a press conference, she's acknowledging this, she says she's working on it. Your thoughts? Well, I'm going to agree with Kathy on some of her points, and it shows that uh, it, it cuts across all political and racial lines in the city of Atlanta. Uh, the fact that the crime right now is, is on a par with Chicago is an outrage. The mayor called it a problem in her press conference? No, it is a full-blown crisis. And I actually uh, think there are two things the mayor could do. I've said that she could pledge right now, and I don't understand why she doesn't do it, pledge right now to support due process for all police officers that are involved in a shooting. And we'll find out if it was a righteous shooting or if it wasn't, but at least pledge that. And I'm going to agree with what Kathy said last week. We need a national search for a new police chief that could bring in a, 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 a Reforms, yes, working with the community, but also more aggressive policing. Aaron, you're close to the mayor. The leader, she's supposed to stand up and tell the community what the direction, give us a direction as to where this community should go, not give passes or create safe environments to commit crimes and to be dangerous. All right, last word there, everyone. Thank you. And coming up, we'll have... Jobs are coming back. Life is good now. Life is worth living.
because it, it does sort of help people like myself to be lifted back up in these low income communities. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve. <laughs> Why you allow people lowering the monster dignity? Because I want my son to go to college. I misjudged you for me. But don't worry, I won't tell anyone your secret. Thank you. Well, I hate to predict. <laughs> I mean, all the evil scientists are twisted fiends in their own right. That said. May be a genius this year with an evil invention so revolutionary that Charlie Bright might finally get knocked off his perch. The only one getting knocked off his perch is you. Eat that monster. I will not be beaten by a hunchback, pot belly, bulgy eyed rut. Vote, Ma, no side effects. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Halloween House of Horrors. Black Cat. <laughs> Longer it takes for y'all to get this sidewalk fixed, the worse it gets. At Barnett's Cafe. Java Vino. There's manuals over there. Mean to tell me y'all can't find this place? In town cleaners and laundry. I think you y'all can locate it now, can't you? Purple moving through the parking lot over there. That's the bug bug. Sets turned on. This is an emergency. I repeat, this is an emergency. By direction of the President of the United States, in full agreement with the Governor of the State of California and the Mayor of Los Angeles, the City of Los Angeles is... In the interests of public safety, hereby proclaimed to be under martial law. <laughs> 